We have finally had a chance to catch our breath from the men's sprint couplet. Now it's time to turn things over to the women as they get set for their fourth event of the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. We appreciate you being with us here today on a beautiful Friday in Madison, Wisconsin, as we are still outside in the North Park at the Alliant Energy Center. We have a packed house here at the desk. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram, Andy Sakamoto, and Dan Bailey. The women's overall standings changed quite a bit after that last event. We had a change in the top two spots as Tia Toomey retakes the overall lead, but only by two points over Kristen Holto. We will not ignore you anymore. <laughs> Carrie Pierce goes from first to third. Haley Adams has gone from sixth to fourth. Brooke Wells is in fifth. Catherine David's daughter is creeping up, as is Amanda Barnhart and Laura Horvath gaining, gaining ground. So a lot of familiar names in the top 10 in the overall point standings as after this event, we will cut down to 30 athletes, two heats of 20 women, just two movements here. And look, man, this one's gonna hurt if you want to have a chance of winning. Right, and we were talking about what a great event this is as far as a cut event goes, right? Because it really just comes down to how, how hard and fast are you willing to go? How much are you willing to suffer to keep yourself on the right side of the line? What's interesting, as you mentioned, we see a lot of familiar faces there in that top 10, and we learned a little bit about how much that might not matter or how much that's going to change after this event because the, the first heat of the, the last event turned out to be much better than the second heat. A lot of guys in that second heat were actually the leaders, so a lot of flip-flops on the leaderboard are going to happen in between 90 seconds and two minutes. Yeah, and that's great news for the women who are taking the field here because, as I said earlier, we're cutting down to 30 athletes. Half of these women are on the wrong side of that line right now, so they need to find a way to get themselves into at least the top 30 if they want to live the fight another day. And there are some women in this heat who can do some damage here on this event. Danny Spiegel is someone who you want to keep an eye on, as is Karen Freyova there in the middle of the field in lane 11. What do you think these women learned, if anything, from watching the men? Be ready to suffer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And go. <laughs> Well, and it'll be interesting to see how many of the female athletes choose to go unbroken on the bar muscle ups as well. Definitely don't attack the top end of that sled on this first push. <laughs> <laughs> that sled is now unloaded for the women as we get set to start heat one of event number four. The spring couplet is underway, 172 feet down, 15 bar muscle ups, 172 feet back to quote Pat Sherwood, couldn't be simpler. And usually, Pat, when Pat said that, you were in for some suffering. Yeah. <laughs> First athletes are in, and they will get to work on those 15-bar muscle-ups. We saw the that bent arm close elbow technique for the sled paid off early for that early leader. I think it was Karn Freyova. The other savvy move she did is that she turned her sled and set it up when she was finished with the first sled. So when she comes off those muscle ups, she can go directly to the sled and not mess with it coming off the, the rig. We talk about interference a lot, how one movement affects another. What kind of interference are they experiencing once you've gone full blast on the sled and now you gotta hop up and do this high skill gymnastics movement? I mean, you think about that, it's, it, it's, it's heart rate, it's the slow increase of the leg pump. You know, I think that part of it can be a little distracting. I mean, bar muscle-ups for all these athletes at this level isn't hard to do. 15 is not too much to ask for, but what it feels like changes that. So Meg Reardon was first off the pull-up bar, and she is back on the sled. She is on the bottom of your screen. Colleen Foch, Karen Freyova, Courtney Haley and Carolyn Prevo are there, but it's going to be Meg Reardon, we think, this one might come down to a couple of seconds, but Meg Reardon wow. is edged oh, out by no. Colleen Foch oh, wow. by two one hundredths of a second. Carolyn Prevo is in. Two one hundredths of a second between Foch and Meg Reardon. Wow. 134.07 seconds. Karen Freyova is in. Danny Spiegel just finished. Emma McQuaid, Camilla Salmonson Hellman is in. Emma Tall. Allison Walkley is in. <laughs> and it's the uh, 
the post sled flop, I guess you can call it, <laughs> that we saw in the first two heats for the men, and we're seeing it repeat itself here for the women. But man, what a great finish between Colleen Foch and Meg Reardon. It looked like Reardon had it, but the official chip timing says that it was Colleen Foch, 134.07 seconds. Well, and I don't even, it almost looked like Meg Reardon kind of flop, maybe flopped a little early, right? Like she kind of immediately collapsed and, and Colleen pushed standing up all the way through. It, it could have been the difference. That's Cheryl Nasso who's still on the pull-up bar and almost tripped over her name placard. Nasso looks like she's going to be cut because she was 38th overall coming into this event and every woman, woman right now in this heat has now finished ahead of her. And that's Carrie, Carrie Beamer. Beamer finishing. And now Nasso is on her sled. And trying to get in inside the time cap here. See now this is a pace that makes sense to me. <laughs> And I bet even this, if we were down there, Sean, would be much too bad. No, it would be probably slower <laughs> than this, so. Yeah, because I wouldn't start it. I'd just say, nope, no yeah, thanks. I'm going to pass done. Right. to mobility day today. I've seen this happen three times. The answer is no. <laughs> Show me the foam roller. And that'll do it as Cheryl Nasso comes across the finish line, but it's two one hundredths of a second that separate Colleen Foch from Meg Reardon. It's another look at how close this finish was. That's a Meg Reardon on the other end of the field is Colleen Foch. She'll come into view here at the upper left part of your screen. It I comes mean. down to that timing chip and when it crosses the line and Meg Reardon looked down and it was Colleen Foch who gets the heat win. Carolyn Prevo and Corinne Freova finish third and fourth and Danny Spiegel and Emma McQuaid Two seconds behind Spiel, Camilla Solomons, and Hellman. As we had six athletes go sub two minutes, we only had two go sub 140. But Colleen Foch, a great sprint at the end, two one hundredths of a second, and she takes heat number one of the sprint couplet. It came down to hundredths of a second between you and Meg Reardon on the other side of the field. What do you have to do going into an event like this to sort of put your head down and go for broke like that? Uh, just seeing the heat and the heats of guys, I knew it was going to be a really, really fast race. So just went into it, um, had to lay it all out there. You absolutely did. And we've seen a lot of different modalities come out in the event so far. A lot is still unknown. What are you hoping to see? What are you hoping to not see coming down the pipeline? Uh, hoping for something heavy, <laughs> some lifting maybe. <laughs> and what about, what would be the worst thing do you think for you? Uh, honestly, there's nothing now that I'm not looking forward to, so just having fun. Awesome. Great attitude, congratulations. Thank you so much. Colleen Foch at 134.07 seconds, edging out Meg Reardon by two one hundredths of a second and now Colleen Foch will take a seat and watch the final 20 women take to the field and hit the sprint couplet. Packed North Park here at the Alliant Energy Center. We are inside the Rogue Tent here in Madison, Wisconsin. Sean Woodland, Chase Ingram, Andy Sakamoto, and Dan Bailey. Thank you so much for spending your Friday with us, everybody. We hope you're enjoying our coverage of the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. Just some things we want to reset here before we get into the final heat. Haley Adams, beginning of the day, we talked about her in sixth place. Well, now she's in fourth. So an impressive run today for Haley Adams. Sarah Sigmund's daughter has crept up. She is in 18th. And Annie Thoris' daughter started the day in second place. And she has now fallen to 14th after that last event. So she has some work to do. Not seriously in danger of being cut, but on the bubble a little bit. You do not want to be anywhere 14 to 25 right now. Right, and on the bubble is not where you want to be for right. this event. A lot's going to happen in a very little amount of time. Yep. Right, and it, it will be interesting to see how she looks on this event, considering how she looked on that last event. Yeah, and we saw things change drastically. Now, Annie is on the very safe sides of the next cut, which is to 30, but then we're going to 20. So yep. you look ahead to that, and now you think about the work you have to, done, have to do in order to be safe as the 
final 20 women, the top 20 women in the overall standings, taking the field for the second of two heats of the fourth event for the individuals here at the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games, the sprint couplet. Overall standings coming in, only six points separate first from third as Tia Claire Toomey is clinging to the overall lead. Kristen Holta, I'm going to say her name as much as I possibly can. <laughs> she is only two points back. Carrie Pierce sits in fourth, and then it's a 20-point drop as Haley Adams has worked her way into the top five. Brooke Wells and Katrin Davis are tied at 234 points, and every name on that list makes sense. This event, I don't know if it makes sense, <laughs> but it's going to hurt. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's for sure. It makes the sense as a good test. It's it doesn't a great make test a whole lot of sense great. to do it on your own. <laughs> that's a yeah. good point, yeah. <laughs> Physically, it makes no sense. <laughs> but as, as a test for these ladies, um, I think it's a perfect event. This will be a great test and a great sprint. And we talked about it before, you, you just contrast it with what we saw earlier right. in that long grueling event. And this one is about going all out. The overall leaders will be in the middle of the field. So Tia Toomey will be in lane number 10. The women who are immediately behind her in the overall standings will occupying the lanes closest to her. Kristen Holta, if she just finishes ahead of Toomey in this event, she might find herself in the overall lead. I mean, time only being several, like two points on the leaderboard, so it'll depend how close they are between each other. The one I'm curious to watch here is Andy Thoris' daughter because of what happened in the previous event. You said before, this is a fantastic test between the two. I want to see how well she's recovered because this isn't exactly an event you're going to be able to bounce back from by what she went through in the previous one. Yeah, it would answer a question for me. Was it something that was just occurring in that event or is it something that's going to be occurring for the rest of the weekend for her? Sarah Sigmund's daughter has talked about beast mode. This would be a good time for her yep. to find that that gear and get herself a, a top two, top three finish. Wherever that card is hiding in her back pocket, you better play it now. Play it yeah. on the table. And there is Annie Thoris' daughter who dropped out of the top 10 courtesy of her finish in the last event. Catherine Davis' daughter has been methodically working her way up the leaderboard. She currently sits inside the top 10. But seconds matter Ten seconds. in this event as all of these athletes look to survive the next cut as we will move down to 30 athletes following the sprint couplet. We are underway. 134.07 seconds is your time to beat. It belongs to Colleen Foch. 172 feet down on the sled and then 15 bar muscle ups. 172 feet back. The first few athletes finishing up that sled push. Brooke Wells in the middle of the screen looks to be one of them. And now onto those 15 bar muscle ups and you just cannot waste any time. In the, five, in the last heat we saw two one hundredths of a second mean the difference between first and second. Danielle Brandon, she's up there with Jamie Green, Amanda Barnhart, Laura Horbath, and Tia Toomey. Amanda Barnhart had your fastest sled push across the field in just under 20 seconds. So that makes sense because if you remember the chaos event from last year when Barnhart got on the slug, just demolished people on that thing. I think she passed like six or seven people as Tia Toomey continues her bar muscle ups. And now it's Jamie Green back on the sled. Danielle Brandon is just about done. The Green whoa, is oh boy. losing ground. And if I had to guess, I'm going to say that's Amanda Barnhart. Amanda Barnhart, I hope I am right about this. Once again, just doing some grunt work, and Amanda Barnhart wins the sprint couplet. Jamie Green is going to finish second. Danielle Brandon, we're going to take you seriously. You finished <laughs> third in the event, and a Fred Cow is fourth. Keep an eye on now who's winning the battle between Tia Toomey and Kristen Holta. The Toomey is in. I have not seen Kristen Holta's name come in. So Tia Toomey looks like she's going to hang on to the overall lead. Good news for Thor's daughter as she's in. So is Laura Horvath. Carrie Pierce, now Kristen Holta. But Amanda Barnhart, my goodness. She only had about a four second differential between her first sled push and her second. 
That's incredibly small considering how we've seen athletes get stopped on that second sled push. We talked about Haley Adams. She's still on the field. She and Mackenzie Riley. Riley's at the bottom of your screen. So Haley Adams was fourth coming in. That's most likely going to change now as she is towards the back of this second heat. And Mackenzie Riley will be the last woman across the finish line. And that'll do it for women's event four. But Amanda Barnhart once again in the North Park on something that just requires pure grunt work. Well, and really impressive from Amanda Barnhart because she's somebody who last year, any upper body pulling events actually kind of got to her. Supposedly, there, she had a biceps injury going into the 2018 games, uh, but even still, she was not the best upper body puller. With that big chunk of bar muscle ups right in the middle, very impressive. And then you can see the difference in speed here. This is Jamie Green who was off first. Amanda Barnhart. I mean, were there wheels on that thing? <laughs> I mentioned that four second differential between the first push and the second. Jamie Green's differential was 18 seconds versus Amanda Barnhart's four second differential on the second sled push. So an event win for Amanda Barnhart as she looks to creep closer to a spot in the top three here at the CrossFit Games. Amanda, from everything we've heard so far, this event just hurts. There's no better way to say it. So going into it, what did you have to do to make sure that you came out on top? Um, honestly, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, I don't know. I just didn't know what to expect at all. But uh, the sled was pretty light, so just kind of went hard. Tried to breathe through the muscle ups and then just pushed as hard as I could on the way back. I got good leg power, so it's kind of my jam. <laughs> to say the least for sure. Now looking ahead to the weekend, I mean, knowing that this is the first type of event where we've seen cuts, what kind of additional pressure does that put on you and your performance? Uh, it's in the back of your mind, but I'm really trying not to think about it. Uh, basically just doing my best. And if I do that, I should end up where I, where I belong. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Amanda Barnhart wins the event, earns 100 points in the process, and unofficially, she's gonna move into second place overall, just 13 points back at Tia Toomey. Similar to what we saw with the men's leaderboard, a little shakeup on that event four on the leaderboard. Guess who's still hanging in there, though? Kristen Holta, unofficially <laughs> still, we're gonna say it as much as we can, we gotta make up for a lot of lost time with her. She sits in third place overall, this is all unofficial, but Barnhart, these are official results. Sub 130, 129.08, Colleen Foch and Meg Reardon, they hang on for second and third. And then Jamie Green takes fourth. Danielle Brandon, well, welcome to the CrossFit Games. Yeah. And welcome to the big time. She takes fifth overall, and Anna Fragkow will finish in sixth place. Once again, unofficially, what this means in the overall standings is that Tia Toomey, is going to be your overall leader still at 343 points. This is all unofficial. She's in first. Second place would be Amanda Barnhart, courtesy of that win. Now 13 points back. Kristen Holta sits in third, only one point ahead of Kerry Pierce in fourth. Jamie Green is in fifth. And then it's Danielle Brandon, again, unofficially, sits in sixth place. Uh, we have talked a lot about who could be the next American woman to get herself on the podium. Haven't seen one since 2014 when Julie Fouché did it. Amanda Barnhart's making a pretty good case for herself here. Not just a podium finish, but maybe a first place right. finish, what we haven't seen in a long time here at the CrossFit Games. Yeah, she just was so impressive there. So we're now through four events. The leaderboard is starting to shape up, make sense. You would think that these were some of the names uh, that you would, would see up there, but at the beginning of the day, we asked, you know, is Daniel Brandon, is she some, some Daniel Brandon, someone that we should take seriously here? Well, the answer now uh, is yes. What questions did, did she answer that you may have had about her coming into this day? She's definitely more well-rounded than we had previously thought, or she's starting to prove that she's more well-rounded as an overall athlete. We've had a whole bunch of different tests with a whole bunch of different movements, and she's proven competence in each one. That's why she's near the top at the leaderboard. Well, and I was actually talking to Blair Morrison for a split second, and he knows her because she's grown up in the Sacramento area. And, and I said, what do you think, Blair? And he said, she is a workhorse. She's a classic uh, over trainer, just in that she is willing to take on all the work that you give her. The only question he had was mentally, can she put this weekend right. together? Physically, he said, she's got it. It'll be mentally if she can hang on. 
All right, well, we're going to take a quick break for a while, actually. Not a quick one. We're going to take a good break. Action is going to continue, though, at 3.15, and we will be back with you to get you set for the next event, whatever and for whomever it may be. <laughs> so stick around. We'll be back in a little while here on the Rogue Iron Game of the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games.